I built this page on my website recently and I thought I would take some time to show you exactly how it was done. Uh, it's been built using the toolset plugins. Um, used to be called WP Types and WP Views and they've rebadged it and uh, it's available from uh, On The Go Systems at wp-types.com and there's basically two plugins that I used. I used the Toolset Types plugin and I used the Toolset Views plugin. Uh, so I thought I'd take you through exactly what I did and how I did it. So I, I'll show you what the website does firstly. This is only one page of the website, it's not the whole website. Really what this is is an index of all of the different snippets that I've used in a tool called Text Expander. You really don't need to know much about what Text Expander does except that it allows you to take a short piece of text and convert that into a long piece of text. Um, so as an example, if I type bracket C bracket, it's going to automatically insert the copyright symbol, no matter what application I'm using or where I happen to be. This index has been built um, using the WP types and WP views modules or the toolset types and toolset views, views modules and plugins. Uh, it's just a nice easy list of all of the different snippets. Uh, I can click on one of them and that's gonna take me in and show me the detail for that. So here it is here. And I can also filter this list and say, you know what, I'm looking specifically for templates. And you can see the list gets filtered and now I've got a list of those specific uh, snippets. I'm gonna look at one of these snippets just as an example so you can see how it starts to get put together. Each of the snippets that you can see here actually consists of five pieces of information. So the first is the actual abbreviation. That's the text that I type. Uh, the next is the description, which oddly enough, is a description of what this snippet does. The next is the actual snippet. So this is the, the content of the script or the code or whatever it gets executed when I type blah, blah. Uh, the next is who submitted this snippet. And although it's not visible on the screen, there's a fifth piece of information, which is the email address of the person who submitted the snippet. So of those five pieces of information, two of them are using standard WordPress fields. The abbreviation, is actually the post title and the description is the post body content. So I've actually had to create three separate fields. So I've created a field to hold the snippet and a field to hold the name of the person who submitted it and a field to hold the email address of that person as well. The great thing about toolset types is that it lets you create these new fields. The other great thing about using this plugin is that it lets you really easily create these tabular lists to organize this information with the links and with the filtering available as well. And this is only one example of, you know, literally hundreds of examples that you could put together. And although this isn't a, an incredibly complex example, um, it's a nice, you know, example to show exactly how these different pieces work together. So I thought what I'd do is I'd take you kind of from scratch all the way through the process of what I did. Uh, and to do that, I've installed a stock standard copy of WordPress. Uh, I've installed the toolset types and the toolset views plugin. Um, and I'm going to just sort of walk through the process. Uh, you can see that in actual fact, this website is a stock standard website. It still has the Hello World post on it. Uh, so I've really done nothing to this except go through and install the, uh, the plugins that I've needed. So to get things started, you go to the toolset menu here and from here we're going to create a new type of post. Now think back to my example, uh, I've got a snippet and so at this point we would actually specify the name that we want to use for the new post that we're going to create. So I'm going to create a new post, we'll call it snippets. Singularly that's called a snippet. I might just clean that up. There we go. Uh, and there's really not a lot more you need to do when you're actually setting up the, uh, the post. We will come back here a little bit later on to make some changes to the configuration of this, but um, at this point we can really just save it. And we've now got a brand new post type that we can work with. And you can actually see over here on the left hand side it's added a new item into the menu. So I can go and add in a brand new snippet if I want to as well. The thing is right now there's really no difference between a post and a snippet except that it's got a different name. I now need to add different fields that I can use that are unique to snippets. And we do that by going down into the post fields section. Fields are created by creating a group of fields and then you put the fields inside that group. So we're gonna create a new group here uh, and I'm gonna call it uh, snippet or snippets, that'll do. 
and I've got three fields that I need to create. Remember, I'm going to use the title and the body content as part of my snippet, so I really only need three other fields. So I need a field to hold the name of the person that submitted the snippet, I need another field for their email address, and I need another field for the actual content of the snippet too. So let's create the first one. We'll create a single line field. This is going to be uh, name of submitter. Oop, submitter. Uh, we'll create another new field here, and this is going to be the email address. So there's a special field specifically designed for managing email addresses. Email of submitter. And it manages all of the uh, validation and everything you would expect. And the last one I'm going to create is a multiple lines field. The multiple lines field is uh, just allows you to open up a box, you know, a text area on the web page that you can add the snippets into. Now you notice that I haven't actually gone through and done any configuration on each of the individual fields. The only thing that I would generally recommend is to figure out the validation. You know, is this a required field, um, and you know what conditions is it is it actually required? Uh, I haven't had a need to go through and modify any of the other elements, but you know you may need to. Now that we've created our fields, we can save that. Uh, because I've done this once before, it's um giving me a couple of errors there. Let's just see if we can continue on. Great. So now I've got my brand new um, group of fields. So the next thing I want to do is I actually want to apply this group of fields to my snippets. So even though I've named it snippets, that doesn't really mean that it automatically gets added to this. So if I went to posts, for example, and chose add new, you notice that I see the snippet fields here. And in this case, it's completely irrelevant. I don't need to see these fields here. So what I want to do is I want to actually apply this group of snippets just to the post type that I've created. So I'm going to go back into my post fields, open up my snippets. You can see over on the right hand side here, we have an area that allows me to, to align these fields with a specific type of post. So if I click on edit, I say I want to apply these to snippets, apply that and save that. What that now means is if I went to create a new post, you can see that those fields are gone from here, but if I go to create a new snippet, I've now got my snippet fields available and they're unique to this post type. So that makes it really easy so you can make sure that you're only using the right fields in the right place. Okay, so we've created a, um, a post and we've put some configurations together. The other thing we need to do is to organize how it's going to be categorized. You remember with my list of snippets, I had a drop down list here and this enabled me to choose and filter my list. So we can do that by creating what Toolset calls a taxonomy. So I'm going to create a brand new taxonomy here. I'm just going to call it a group. So these are the groups and this is the group. Uh, the only decision you need to make here are really is around what type of taxonomy this is. Hierarchical, oddly enough, means that I can put groups inside of groups, and flat just means that I can apply this group to um, uh, my posts or my snippets, and there's no hierarchy involved. In this case, I'm not going to worry about a hierarchy, so I'm just going to say that this is a flat list of, um, of categories, and I'm going to assign it to my snippets post type. Now that I've saved that, when I go to actually add in a new snippet, firstly, you can see that I have a groups section available here. And when I go to add in a new snippet, over on the right, I have the ability to choose or create uh, groups on the fly as well. So let's create a new snippet. I'm going to create a snippet that allows me to sign off on the bottom of an email. So I'm going to call it sign off. What's the description for it? Uh, this snippet. Uh, adds a sign off sign to the bottom of an email. What's the name of the submitter? Well, that's me, and what's my address? So we'll put that in and we'll spell it right. And then what's the actual snippet? So the snippet's going to say regards, uh, comma, enter, 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 J, and then it might have you know, my phone number whatever that might be. It doesn't really matter what the content of it is right now. Over on the right hand side, we then want to put in a group that this is going to be assigned to. Now remember what the groups are doing is that they're going to be used to create this drop-down list that we see here. 
So I can really make this up as whatever I need to, uh, need this to be. So I might just call this email as an example and add that in. Now I can publish that, but if I was publishing a normal post, I'd then be able to see what that post looks like. The problem is, is that if I go to actually preview this, it's really not going to know the difference between this and any other post. So the toolset plugin allows us to use something called content templates. And the content templates allow us to define what each of these individual types might look like. So if I go back to my post types and jump into snippets, you can see that allows me to define different front-end displays. So I can create a template, an archive, views, and forms as well. To give you an example, if I go and click on this blah blah snippet here, a content template is being used to show how this looks. The fact that I've got uh, the word abbreviation followed by in bold the snippet. The fact that I've got the word description and then on a new line I've got the description that I've got the dotted line around my snippet, etc. So all of those things are mapped into the content template so that when I open up one of these um, posts on WordPress, it actually displays it in the way that I want it to be displayed. So when I look at my post, you can, or post type, you can see that there is no content template that's been assigned to it. So I'm gonna go and choose to create a content template right now. Now, you get a basic editor here that allows me to actually build out what I want this to look like. So I'm going to sort of generally mock this up. And I'll, let's say we'll put the um, snippet name here. Uh, and then a couple of lines under that, we want the description. And then we want the actual snippet under that. And then we'll say submitted by, and we want the name of the person who submitted it at the bottom there as well. We'll put some spacing in here, nice. So the fields and views button allows me to actually navigate through all of my different post types, all of my different fields that I've got available and to insert them in. Now remember in my case, the name of the snippet is actually the title of the post. So I'm gonna go through and from my list of basic fields, choose the post title and insert that. The description is actually the content of the, uh, the post. So if I go into fields and views, you can see I've got a field here called post body and we'll insert that. The snippet, this bit here, so this is one of my fields that I've created. If I scroll down, you can see that I've got my three fields that I've created as part of my field group. So in this case, I want the actual snippet content and we'll insert that. And then the final piece is who, we, who submitted it. So I'm gonna say submitted by and I'll scroll down and I'll pick name of submitter from my list and insert that. Now I wanted a few of these items in bold so I can highlight the um, short codes that have been added and use standard formatting to actually make this look how I want it to look. I'll put this in bold and we'll leave that as it is. So I've created my template. Let's save all of that. Great, it's all been saved. And now I can go through and see what that might look like. So I've got my sign off available here. I can open that up, have a look at it in this case. And if I choose preview changes, what it's doing now is it's using that content template and it's displaying it in the screen. You can see that the formatting isn't quite right. So I should probably use some paragraph tags and some, some line breaks and some other formatting to make it look exactly how I want. Now the great thing about this is that you can actually move back and forth between defining the content template and defining what it's gonna look like as well. So I'm going to jump back into my content template, open that up, uh, and I'm just going to do some basic formatting here. So uh, let's say we want to put uh, a new line here. I might just copy that, put a new line here, one there, one there, and we might put another one there as well. Let's save that. I'll just refresh this page. There we go, that's looking a little bit better. I'm not gonna to be too concerned about how this all looks. Um, I'm really just concerned about the sort of the construct of how this comes together. So we've got our content template, that's great. The other piece we need though is we also need the view. The view is what actually gives us our list of all of the different snippets. So I'm gonna jump back to my website for a minute and on my text expander snippets page, we've got this list of all of the different snippets here and we've got a drop down that allows me to filter my list. So this is what we're trying to achieve. Close my preview. Now, one of the things that I've noticed is that when you go into post types, 
and you go to snippets, you have the ability to create a view right here. My recommendation would be to not do that. My recommendation would be to actually go to the views list here and create a view. The main difference is that when you create it from the post types, you don't get this window. When you create it from the views screen, you do get this window and we need to display, we need to choose an option on this window. So we're going to say uh, list of snippets. And what we want to do in this case is we actually want to display the list as a parametric search. So this is my parameter and I'm going to filter the list based on that parameter. So I can choose that there and that will automatically build up the list and it will apply the filtering for me as well. Let's create our view. There's an awful lot of descriptive content on here about how the, um, the parameters work. I found that it was pretty straightforward, um, so I'm just going to sort of walk through and show you the elements that I did. So the first thing that I did is I specified what posts am I interested in looking at. So I'm looking at snippets. How do I want them ordered? Well, I'm going to order them by the title of the post, which is my abbreviation, and I'm going to put them in alphabetical order. The next thing is I want to define how my parameter is actually going to work. So these options basically allow me to define um, how the filter gets applied. Now I generally would choose this option here. So that basically means an Ajax result update when the visitor changes any filter value. So you notice what that means is that I can just choose a new option and I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to click an OK button or a submit button or a filter button. It just filters, right? So that's using an Ajax mechanism to enable me to choose an item and have it automatically applied. And that's what I'm looking for in this case. We've now got our, uh, our filter available, and this allows me to define how I want my, um, my list to be filtered. Now, I want my list to be filtered by the group that I created before. Remember, we created a taxonomy that allows me to see all the different groupings. So I'm going to click in the middle of my filter controls here. I'm going to create a new filter. And I want to filter this by the group's taxonomy. What kind of input do I want? Well, I want to use a select list. So that means it displays as a drop-down list like this. Um, the option for not selected, this is an interesting one. You notice when you load this page here, it shows all of the filters firstly, or sorry, it shows all of the snippets and there's no filtering applied. So the words all groups is what's used here. So if I say the label for not selected, so I'll say, change it up, say, everything. And that simply means that everything will be selected as the first item in the list. And when no filter is applied, that's what gets picked. Now for this example, there's really not a lot more that we need to do here. The only other thing that you might want to pay attention to is this option here. So the terms without any posts. So if you say include, that simply means that it's going to include groups that don't have any posts assigned, sorry, that don't have any snippets assigned to them. If you say exclude, it's only going to show you those groups that do actually have a snippet assigned to them. Right, so we'll say include and insert that. Now it puts in this complex shortcode. Right? Um, the only thing I would do is maybe change this. So instead of it saying groups, I, I might use the term filter to define that instead. Save this as we go. And then the next step is what I actually want my list to look like. So my list has three columns. It's got an abbreviation, a description, and who it's submitted by. So this section here is where I'm actually figuring out the fields of information I want to use. Now, thankfully, there's a wizard that I can use here, and this allows it, me to make this, um, this table really, really quickly. So I'm going to say, I want a table. And then I can choose the fields that I want in my table. So remember, my post title is my abbreviation, so that's my first column. My post body is my description, so we'll use that next. And then the final thing is who it's been submitted by. So in my case, that is one of these custom fields. That is the name of the submitter. So we'll add that in as well. I'll click on finish. And that'll now build out a small table here. And this loop element here is automatically looped through for each of the items that I've got in my posts, that is for each of my snippets. Now, it's kind of tricky in what, did it, what it does here. For each individual snippet, it's actually creating a, um, or referencing another uh, content template. So further down the page, and that's what this yellow, the orange box is saying, further down the page, 
this is what my actual rows in my table will look like. So if I wanted to do any formatting of the individual items in the rows, then this is where I would do that formatting. Let's save all of that. And then with a single click, I can also then create a page with that. So if I click create page with this view, when I jump into pages, I've now got a draft page sitting here. That's my list of snippets. And really all it's done is it's created the short code for me there. If I preview this, what I'm now going to get is my three column table and I'm going to get my filter available here as well. Now I've only got one group available and I've only got one snippet that's assigned to that group as well. But the same concept applies. If I was to go through and add another one in, I'd be able to filter that accordingly. Now you may notice that the table that's been created doesn't have any column headings. So this is the only thing that I found that I had to go and do a little bit manually. There may be a better way to do this. So I'll jump back to my view and I'm going to scroll down to the loop output. So this loop output allows me to define or to customize how I want the output to look. So I'm going to actually add in a new section in this table. We'll create a table head section. And we'll put in a couple of table header items. So the first one we want is the abbreviation. I'm just going to copy and paste that a few times. Column two is the description. And column three is the name of the submitter. So we'll just call it submitter. Let's tidy that up a little bit. Great. Save all of that. Jump back and preview my site. And I've now got my column headings here as well. Let's add in one more snippet just to make sure that our grouping's working here as well. So I'm going to create a new group called template uh, and I'll fill in some uh, a snippet for that as well. So let's add a new snippet. Um, I'll call it template seven. Uh, this is an example piece of content. Name of the submitter, J. Actually, I'll make it Bob. And here is the snippet content. Publish that. We'll refresh our, our view. So I've now got my second snippet that's been applied. And I forgot to assign it to a group. <laughs> so let's create a group called templates and add that in. Update that. Great. So I've now got email and templates as my two different groups. So if I choose email, you notice that I'm now just seeing the email snippets. If I choose templates, I'm now seeing the template snippets. And if I choose everything, oddly enough, I get everything. So there's one thing left. We need to create a link so that when I click on one of these items, I get taken to the individual page that allows me to see that snippet. So to do that, we're going to go back and modify this view. I'm going to go down to my content template, which has the individual rows that get displayed. And you can see at the moment that what it's doing is it's displaying the title of the post. Well, that's close, but not exactly what we want. Instead, what we want is not only the title of the post, but we want a post with the link in there as well. Great. Let's save that. Refresh the page. Magic. And now I've got my links going through to my individual pages, and those pages are using the content template. So like I said, we haven't done anything amazingly complicated, but it is a really good example of how to build something up. And you know, we've done this in 10, 15 minutes or so uh, as part of this process. I hope that's been useful for you.